This clip is brought to you by SaveWithConrad.com. So Dr. Death is going to split his time between uh, Jim Crockett slash the NWA, whatever you want to call it, and all Japan pro wrestling. When does someone with the amateur background and the size of Dr. Death catch Vince's eye? Do you remember there ever being even preliminary discussions? Because there's a lot of talent leaving Jim Crockett and jumping ship over to the world wrestling federation, whether it's what's going to be the big boss man or Rick rude or Ron Garvin or, or the brain busters on and on folks are jumping ship. Dr. Death. Not so much. Why is that? Because doc had Japan and doc loved Japan. I see. So doc had that deal in Japan, which made his year. I so see. for him to come back and not have to work a full schedule with Jim Crockett, it's like, yeah, yeah, okay. I'll come back and work work some dates here in the States and everything, but his deal, I mean, the bulk of his, his year was Japan. Did you, um, we know most of Steve's success came from Japan, specifically working in all Japan before Jim Ross came on board with the WWF, I guess in 93, do you remember there ever even being a preliminary discussion? Because I could see how you would have that guy with a mouthpiece. Maybe Bobby Heenan is going to be his mouthpiece. He could have been an opponent for Hogan, right? I think so. I think that Doc definitely could have. And I know there were attempts when DiBiase came in and we looked at Doc and thought, hey, this may be somebody that could come in. But I don't know that Vince ever really saw a character in him. The Dr. Death moniker is one thing, but but what is a Dr. Death? And at the same time, Doc had a look that was scary. I mean, <laughs> look at him. Doc was the real deal. And I think that we definitely could have done something with him the, for the same reason that Doc wasn't interested in working for Jim Crockett on a regular basis was the same reason Doc wasn't interested in coming into WWE because he had you know more freedom by going to Japan and then come back and work the dates he wanted to work. So we know Jr. is going to get hired in 93. Uh, once Jr. comes in as an announcer, is he bringing up Dr. Death at all? You know, it's funny. Jr. talks about all the people he brought in. Does Jr. ever talk about how he came in? Uh, yeah, we've told the story about uh, how, who do you call Bruce Pritchard? Okay. I just want to make sure. Are you move yeah. sooner, move sooner. Are you, We're a cheater. We went sooner that we didn't wait for the boom, boom. Those are boomers. They are losers. Okay. Boy, this is going to end in a cage match, a salad steel <laughs> cage match. Uh, chat me up though. When, when Dr. Death comes in or when Jr. comes in, does he start campaigning for his old pal, Steve Williams? You know, I, I do think that, uh, Jr. mentioned Dr. Death because Jr. is has always been a big advocate of Dr. Death, and rightfully so. I, fuck, I was a big advocate for Dr. Death. So here was somebody that had not really been tapped and not been put in a prominent position in the States since Mid-South and since Bill Watts. So to a lot of uh, domestic viewers, shit, Doc would be new no matter where he was in, in Crockett or WWE. Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson. Thanks for checking out the podcast here on YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you get a notice anytime we upload some new content. And go save yourself some money right now. If you're in a 30-year loan or you have credit card debt, it's not a matter of if I can save you money. It's a matter of how much. Find out right now for free at SaveWithConrad.com.